Hey guys, it's Vivian the Psalm next door. Today we're going to be talking about Central Coast California wines and trying to simplify it for you guys so you guys have some help when you guys are picking out wines. Not really an area that I've been super comfortable with, so this is also helping me make these areas click for me. Please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel and let's get started. Central Coast, what is that? It starts in San Francisco and goes all the way down to Santa Barbara. They split it up between North and South, which is why it's kind of confusing because you're like North Coast, North Central Coast. North Coast, I'm much more familiar with. That's where there's Napa, Sonoma, Mendocino. Interestingly enough, I think I'm gonna actually start in the south area. So let's start in Santa Barbara. So we have two main valleys. We have Santa Maria and Santa Ynez. Within Santa Ynez, we have three distinct locations and the most famous one being Santa Rita Hills. Santa Rita Hills is the coolest area in that valley. And it's interesting because it, the valley runs east to west. The closer you are to the coast, typically the cooler it is. And cool climate grapes are like Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. More inland, the warmer it gets. And that's where you're gonna find a lot of rich, inky Syrahs and Cabernets. And right now I am drinking a Santa Barbara County Chardonnay is made from grapes from Santa Rita Hills and Santa Maria Valley. And so diatom, which I did not know what that meant, it's basically soil that's made from very small aquatic organisms, so it makes a very fine soil. This producer, Greg Brewer, he's pretty famous in the Santa Barbara area. He founded Brewer Clifton. Their Pinot Noirs are pretty well known. This one is really tasty. It, it's similar to a Premier Cru Burgundy. It's very, very complex, like ripe Meyer lemon. There's some like salinity to it. And then on the palate, it's so vibrant and has a lot of depth to it as well. And it's, it's fantastic. I actually was very pleasantly surprised with the Chardonnay. Okay, we are moving on to my second wine. I have three wines in total and we're sticking in Santa Barbara. I've seen these wines and I've heard about these wines, but I've yet to taste them for the first time. So this is Belle Gloss. You probably have seen it. They have such a distinctive red wax label or bottle packaging <laughs> how do you do this bell gloss is owned by the wagner family and they basically own like so many lines so they also own camus they also own miomi so bell gloss was created to showcase the different pinot noirs along the coast they have a santa maria pinot noir which is the one i'm drinking today it's the clark and telephone 2020 santa maria valley the baking spices in here are so luscious very ripe red fruits like raspberries red currants but there's like cedar and like a blueberry note it's really delicious. Actually, I think for $55, this is pretty, pretty tasty. So key takeaways from Santa Barbara is Pinot Noirs and Chardonnays are very, very delicious, long growing season. So they become very, very intense, but don't lose, like they don't become flabby because of the cool climate. And then on the, the Eastern side of Santa Barbara, are very, very strong and potent Syrahs. So I think that's really the skinny of Santa Barbara. So while I'm finishing this glass up, we are gonna skip to North Central Coast. North Central Coast, I think that's 
probably where I got the most confused. It's so diverse. A, a region can produce so many different types of wines. So it's kind of hard to pinpoint, hey, this is a North Central Coast wine. So right below San Francisco is Santa Cruz Mountain. Because it's very mountainous, it has a lot of mesoclimate. So it really can produce anywhere from very lovely Cabernet Sauvignons like Ridge Montebello, iconic, a cult wine. But they can also produce Pinot Noirs and Chardonnays, like Mount Eden Vineyard. You can do full body, light body, just depending on where you end up in this coastal range. You really just gotta know producers and what they're good at. Then one that you guys should all know is Santa Lucia Highlands, and they are known for very rich, bold Pinot Noirs, black fruits, plums, more intense Pinot Noir. If you are a Burgundy Pinot Noir purist, Santa Lucia Highlands is really not your alley. You probably want to avoid that. The last area that I wanna talk about is Paso Robles. A lot of people are realizing that they can make a lot of great Cabernets for a fraction of the price of Napa Valley, halfway between San Francisco and LA. Paso Robles is a pretty warm area because the Santa Lucia range really shields this area from the cool Pacific Ocean influences. This area is known for their Cabernet Sauvignon, their Zinfandels, their Syrahs, strong, big, bold reds. You probably have seen it. I think they've done a pretty good job with their distribution. So Dow, it's known for trying to achieve a Bordeaux-like quality. And so when I was drinking this, it's like very powerful, very spicy, dried herbs, and the tannins, ooh, goodbye, saliva. Went for around $25. It's very rich and inky. And for the price point, it's not too bad. It could benefit from a little smoothing out, but I think people do prefer this powerful form of a Cabernet Sauvignon. Maybe in the last decade or two, they've split up Paso Robles into smaller AVAs. Now we're still trying to figure out how these AVAs translates into the distinct qualities in the wine, but they will. I will say that closer to the coast, just like all the way down, is gonna be typically cooler than farther in. <laughs> Don't worry y'all, I got, I got my other one. All right guys, that was Central Coast, a very, very simplified version. Let me know what else you guys want me to cover. It's been a while, it really has. It's been a while since I've done a lesson I know, I know. I'm I'm I was kind of like needed some inspiration of what I wanted to talk about next and I don't know why Central Coast kind of popped up. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel and cheers. I'll catch you guys later.